Welcome back to Behind the Stats on SportsRadioKC.com. Along with Steve Wrinkle, I'm Matt Folks. Uh, joining us on the phone line is David Emerson from uh, FLHW.org. And uh, basically this Texas Hold'em Poker Tournament is sponsored by uh, FLHW.org. And, and David himself is uh, has battled prostate cancer. And David, first off, thanks for joining us here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to have me on today. Well, first off, tell us uh, tell us about the poker tournament coming up on Monday and how it's kind of tied in, obviously, with, with prostate cancer, but, but your organization, your FLHW.org, uh, which is a cool website. We'll talk about that here in a second as well. But you, you've you raised more than $175,000 over the last few years for prostate cancer research, and, and I guess Monday is just... Uh, it's going to add to that a little bit. Exactly. Um, FLHW stands for Faith, Love, Hope, Win, and this is a nonprofit foundation that my wife and several friends started uh, about five and a half years ago, right after I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. And we have, um, for example, Monday night we have uh, the poker tournament coming up. But through the course of the year, um, we have poker tournament in February. We have a disc golf tournament every May. Um, and we have a, our big event is, is a, uh, a golf tournament that we have. Uh, we've had an iron horse the last couple of years. Um, but all of those events are, in, are uh, intended to raise awareness for the participants and uh, raise money for prostate cancer research. Well, and, and you say when you were diagnosed, you were diagnosed when you were, what, 41, 42, somewhere in there? The symptoms started when I was 41, but officially my, I was diagnosed right after my 42nd birthday. Wow. And if, if you want me to just go with it a minute here, I, I've yeah, go ahead. talked a little bit about prostate cancer in general. I mean, you mentioned, John, um, one in six men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer before they die. Um, in, in the huge majority of those cases, it's cured, or in, in some cases, um, that no treatment's required at all. They prostate cancer is is present in those men, but they can monitor it and not really have to have surgery or any kind of treatments at all. Um, in a case like mine, um, not only was I young when it was discovered, but it had also already escaped the prostate gland. And, and prostate cancer is one of the, in lack of a better term this morning, one of the nastier ones. And when it metastasized outside the prostate gland, it likes to glom on to bone. And in my case, um, the, in the initial diagnosis, I, it had in fact metastasized to bone, remains there today, but there's no cure for it. Um, once it gets into bone, it's, it's really just a, a treatment issue. And, you know, in the past six years, I've been through pretty much all of them, if, if, uh, if you will. But, you know, on the, on the good news, um, I, I've lived twice as long as the averages or the, the statistics would say. Um, you know, and it's as bad as it, it has been at times, and, you know, currently I'm about to switch to some other treatment. Um, the encouraging news is five years ago when I was diagnosed, a man at my stage who, you know, once it gets into your bone, they, removing your prostate really makes no difference. It, it, it's not going to help you because the, the cancer is kind of living on its own outside the gland. So what they do is they treat you with hormone deprivation, which... Um, you know, a lot of guys in your audience will, will probably get a chuckle out of this, but that basically means it shuts down the testosterone production in your body. And I kind of become like a, you know, a teenage boy, um, if you will. Not a lot of testosterone in my body, but I don't want to go into too much detail. You go through that, and then there's chemo, and then there's several other treatments, but there's just not a lot out there. Where I was going is five years ago, if you were to where I'm at, your only option really at this point would be chemo. And it's not a cure, and it's just something to kind of keep you going for a while. Well, I like to think our little organization, Faith, Love, Hope, Wins, had a little to do with this, but earlier this year a new drug was approved by the FDA, and right now there's five or six drugs kind of on the cusp of approval that will, again, they're not cures, but for advanced prostate cancer men, they help extend the life of, of the man for longer and longer and maybe one day do a cure. What was that first moment? like for you when you were told and uh, it's different I think for everybody but when you heard those words that you know hey David you have cancer well two things initially it's it's like you can imagine it's devastating you know it's the, the proverbial kick in the gut 
um, my wife and I had a really bad initial weekend. You know, we did a lot of crying and not a lot of sleeping, but, um, you know, the, the, and I guess the, the foundation of faith, love, hope, wind goes back to, you know, after that first weekend, I came home from work on a Monday night. She kind of grabbed me by the lapels and said, you know, we got a lot left to do. Um, you know, we had an eight year old son at the time in the other room. And she said, you know, we can't give up. There's just, there's just too many things we can do and too much living we got left. So, um, don't know how to describe it besides that. It's, it's devastating, but I'm just one of those people that's not going to focus on the negative and, and keep focusing on the positive. And you say it's, it's still in your bone today. Yes, it is. Um, I had four or five, most of the first five years, I'd, I'd lived relatively pain free, you know, from time to time, there'd be an occasion where I'd have to take some Advil or something, but I didn't have to have radiation and I didn't have to, you know, ask the doc for a prescription to pain pills. It was somewhat under control. Um, last this past June, uh, kind of out of control on both my thigh bones, a little bit in my hips, and I had to have about 15 radiation treatments. And you know that I've recovered from that. But um, the, the the disease itself. I mean, prostate cancer is is measured or initially diagnosed um, through two things. One, a blood test called a PSA test, which stands for prostate specific antigen um, if that comes back and the number's high enough m- most urologists are going to want to do a biopsy where they actually go and take a sample of your prostate and, and measure to see if there is in fact cancer and, and what stage of the cancer is um, so I, I guess I'm bringing that up because I'm I would like to encourage men you know if you're 45 or older um, and you're ha- and you should be having regular physicals you know, go back to, uh, or go to your doctor and, and ask your doctor for the test. It's a simple blood test. And, you know, the test isn't, is only the first step, you know, then you have to have a lot of, do a lot of research and, and have a lot of, uh, discussions with your doctor about what to do about it. If it is in fact present. Well, and, and, and to be 42 and, and diagnosed, did you had a, a history in your family at all? Yeah, my father had it. My, he, he had a surgery and radiation, you know, at the time, it was 10 years previous and, uh, you know, successfully recovered. And, um, you know, at 41, I didn't really consider being tested, but, you know, uh, American Cancer Society and a lot of other uh, encourage that uh, if it's in your family, direct bloodline, you know, brother, father, uncle, that at 40, you should probably should be uh, tested. We're talking to David Emerson, and, and you can find out more about his story and the Faith, Love, Hope, Win organization at flhw.org but again coming up on monday december 6 7 p.m at the outlaw cigar company they'll have the uh, a poker tournament and uh, john holt is going to be a part of that and now are you a uh, are you much of a, of a card player david i'll play you know it depends on, on the kind of crowd we get i've played before um we had about you know when the event was first getting started i want to say probably three years ago we had about 25 guys. Uh, it was an icy February day, and uh, I ended up playing and winning the whole thing, but deferred my prizes to the second place gentleman. So, um, love Texas Hold'em. I wouldn't say I'm good. Um, I got really lucky that night. So, uh, <laughs> really lucky. So, um, the cards just fell my way. I don't have the patience for it. I, I tell you, I'm just, uh, I, I gamble too. Uh, I guess I put put too much in early in the night and i'm not patient enough to hang around but it's a good time you know you know for those that are listening um it's a 25 dollars donation you're not playing for cash you're playing for prizes and we have ipod and some gift certificates to restaurants and um it's more about camaraderie a little bit awareness of the disease um and if if the folks aren't familiar with outlaw um they have a huge humidor if you like to smoke cigars um, they don't have a liquor license, so if you like to, you know, have a couple cocktails while you're playing cards, you got to bring your own. Um, but we'll have snacks and, uh, you know, bottled water and, and things we can provide. But uh, I encourage some some of your listeners to come out. Well, again, that's uh, Monday night, the Outlaw Cigar Company, about 137th in Metcalf. And if they want more information, I'm assuming they, I know for a fact, I've already done it myself, but you can go to flhw.org and, and, uh, 
get more information. But if they want to call somebody, if they they need directions, whatever it might be, where do they go? Um, gosh, the easiest thing is uh, there's a phone number on the website. Um, our phone number is 913-735-FLHW. And just leave a voicemail, and I'll get in myself or, or somebody will get back to them right away. But it's pretty simple to find. The, their address is 13700 Medcalf, and it's it's right on the just south of the intersection, southwest of the intersection of 130th and Math. And it's a, I hadn't been in there until about a month ago when I went in and met with the folks here and set this up, and it's, it's pretty impressive when you go inside of there. Well, it should be an outstanding event. should be a lot of fun. And again, folks, just keep this in mind, the, the uh, Faith, Love, Hope, Win uh, organization, as it were, has raised one hundred and seventy five more than $175,000 in uh, the last five years, which is outstanding. I mean, it's it's incredible. And, and so, David, you need to be commended for that and your wife and the other people involved. But uh, we said the same thing to John Holt. We had him on the last time just a few weeks ago. And so I'll say this to you as well, that ask somebody in their, their late 40s and somebody who was diagnosed – uh, start showing symptoms at age 41, diagnosed 42. What is your, and you said this a minute ago, but just to stress at home for, for any guy listening, what is your message right now? Well, um, three things. One, you know, as much as your doctor and you hear it on TV, you know, stay in shape. And I'm not talking about, you know, become a muscle builder, but better and, and get some exercise. I mean, walking, you know, it's incredible. I, I mentioned earlier, I play disc golf quite a bit. It's not a really physically demanding sport, but you, you walk quite a bit. So get out and walk a little bit. You know, 30 times a week make all the difference in the world. Second, if you have prostate cancer history in your family, direct blood relative, you know, father, brother, uncle, like I said, 40 years old, you need to go see your general practitioner. You don't have to go see a specialist, but go talk to your general practitioner and have them do a PSA test. It's really inexpensive. I haven't heard of insurance companies balking at the age of 40 of covering that. And if you're 45 or older, it's a conversation you ought to start having with your doctor every year and, in most cases, start having the, the, the blood test every year. Once you're, you know, if your blood test does, in fact, come back positive, you know, it doesn't mean you immediately have to go out and have surgery, you know. If it's as bad as mine was, you got to do something rather rather quickly. But if your numbers are low, there's a lot of cases you can just monitor it year to year, and once it reaches a certain threshold, then do something about it. Very good. Well, David, we appreciate your time here today, and we appreciate you sharing your story. And, and again, congratulations on uh, not only licking this thing, but you know also just the great job that uh, Faith, Love, Hope, Win has done in this fight against prostate cancer. I really appreciate uh, the time you gave me on uh, Sports Radio Kansas City. Great. Thanks a lot. Take care.